Database branching is one of the fundamental features of planet scale, but learning how to integrate it into an existing environment can be a little bit tricky only because it is a new paradigm and way of thinking compared to basically how the database world has existed for the past several decades. In this video, I'll show you what branches are behind the scenes so you get a better understanding of what's going on when you create a branch. I'll show you how to use deploy requests to merge changes between branches, and then we're going to work through several increasingly complex scenarios where we'll start on doing all of this work inside of the Planet Scale dashboard manually to automating the entire process using GitHub actions. And then finally, we'll end with schema reverts, which is a way to quickly back out changes to your database that might be causing any kind of production issues. In order to fully understand database branching, it's worth covering some of the basics of Vitess. Vitess is the open source project that PlanetScale is essentially built on top of. It is a MySQL compatible platform that was originally designed by a team at YouTube in the early 2010s in order to handle some scaling issues they were experiencing at the time with using a traditional MySQL environment. Every single database in Vitesse is actually a cluster with one primary and one or more replicas which contains copies of the data from the primary. In front of these clusters is a smart and stateless proxy known as VTGate that routes requests to the different clusters within an individual Vitesse environment. It's designed to speak the MySQL protocol, so when applications connect to a Vitesse cluster, they're actually connecting to VTGate instead of one of the individual clusters, and then VTGate will route the traffic to the clusters where the requested data actually lives. So whenever a new database in PlanetScale is created, it is actually creating a Vitesse cluster behind the scenes, which contains the following three components. A tablet, which is essentially a MySQL instance plus an additional sidecar process that the VT gate will connect. The VT gate proxy, which sits in front of this database cluster, and then a management interface, which is used by PlanetScale to manage the entire cluster. Every single database in PlanetScale has at least one primary tablet, as well as one or more replicas, depending on the plan that's selected. And it's worth noting that all of this happens transparently to the application. So whenever your application connects to a database in planet scale, none of this complexity is actually known to it. It all happens behind the scenes. So that begs the question, what is a branch in planet scale? And a branch is essentially the same thing as a database. It is a Vitesse cluster, which has the exact same three components described for the database, has one primary and can contain one or more replicas, depending on the plan. And in all this happens transparently to the application. When a branch is created in planet scale, the schema of the upstream database is automatically copied to that branch. So this way you can connect to it and manage it. And optionally with the data branching feature, you can also copy the data from an existing backup of your production database branch into the new development branch you just created. Deploy requests in Planet Scale are very similar to pull requests in a development environment. They allow you to merge schema changes from one branch to another, provided the upstream branch has the safe migration features enabled. Safe migrations is what allows for deploy requests to happen with zero downtime to your production branches by using a staging and cutover strategy. Essentially, when a change is made to a table inside of the upstream branch, a copy of that table is created with a new version of the schema, the data is replicated over, and then when you are ready to pull the trigger on completing the deploy request, the statuses of the table are flipped. So the staging table becomes the production table, and the production table is either discarded or becomes the staging table, which is used for schema reverts, which I'll explain later in this video. Now that you understand that a database branch is essentially a completely isolated Vitesse cluster from your production database within planet scale, we're going to take a look at how you can make changes to your production database using zero downtime migrations with deploy requests. And we're going to do all this work manually directly within the planet scale dashboard to start. To set the stage, I'm using this application that we built internally called Tweeter, which is a simple Twitter clone built with Ruby on Rails and deployed to fly.io. I can come in here and I can just say hello world to tweet something out and click tweet. And we can see it shows in the bottom of my profile. If I head up to the tweets tab here, we can see a list of other tweets here that is just mock data that's been seeded into the database. Now, one of the things that's very common within these types of applications is the ability to like a tweet, which is obviously missing from any one of the tweets we have listed below. So for the different scenarios demonstrated today, we're going to look at what it would take to add a like button to this tweet from the perspective of the database by using a combination of branching deploy requests. And then to wrap up, we'll take a look at situations in which a schema revert would be necessary when when it comes to backing out changes that may have been mistakenly made to the database. So I'm logged into planet scale and I have the database for tweeter open. You'll notice there is a check next to the safe migrations, which means the safe migrations feature is turned on. This means that I cannot make any kind of schema changes on the main branch. In fact, if we head over to console and I click into connect to the main branch and let's just quickly show the tables that I have. That's part of this database. You can see there's a tweets table. If I describe tweets, 
there are five columns an ID, the content, which is the text of the tweet, the user ID who created it, when it was created, and when it was updated. Now we can easily add a likes column here. So let's go ahead and try to do that. I'll say alter table tweets, add likes. We'll make it an integer and we'll set a default value of zero. And we get an error stating that data definition language or DDL, the language that is used to alter the structure of a schema is actually not supported on production branches with safe migrations enabled. So we have to create a branch in order to apply these changes. So let's do that now. I'm going to scroll back up to the top here and I'm going to go to branches and click new branch. Let's go ahead and name this branch add likes and click create branch. Now, initializing a branch for the first time takes a few moments, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this video. Okay, branch is created. If I go into console and I select the add likes branch from the drop down here and connect here, let's alter the table name tweets and let's add a new column called likes that has that is an integer and has a default value of zero. So the add likes branch does not have safe migrations enabled, which means we can execute these types of statements against that specific branch. In fact, if I head over to branches and select the add likes branch once again, the planet scale dashboard will actually show you the differences between its current branch and then the upstream branch, which in this case is main, our production branch. Now, in order to take these changes and merge them into the main database branch, we can create what's called a deploy request. A deploy request lets you merge changes, obviously, between different branches, but also lets members of your team make comments on the specific changes that are being made, as well as lets you see the schema changes that are actually going to be applied when this deploy request is merged in. So I'm going to go ahead and back to summary, and then let's go ahead and click deploy changes. And now that the changes have been deployed successfully, let's go back to the main branch and describe the tweets table again. And there you have it. We now have a six column likes that is a, an integer type that has a default value of zero. So to recap, we were able to make changes to our development branch named add likes. And if we were writing any code, we could actually connect to that development branch, test out our changes before pushing things into production, just to make sure everything works the way we're expecting to. In this next demo, we're going to perform the exact same operations that we just did within the planet scale dashboard. However, we're going to actually throw some code into the mix as well. Using the Ruby on Rails code and migration system, let's take a look at how we can make changes to our database schema and our application using your local development environment. So I have VS Code open on screen that contains the source code for the Twitter sample app. So what I'm going to do is merge in a branch I have called add likes, which will add all the necessary code that will enable us to like tweets in the Twitter app. So I'll hit enter and then I can use VS Code's interface to look at some of these changes instead of saving it through the terminal. We can look at the tweets controller here and we can see there's a new function here called like tweet. Tweets.html is what's going to drive the UI that's going to add a heart icon to each one of those tweets. We got a new route here for post on the tweet so this way we can actually call that controller method. The schema file for the tweets table has a likes column with a default value of zero. And then finally, we have a schema migration file, which is used by Rails in order to apply these changes to the database using the built-in migration system. So I'll go ahead and commit these changes to the main branch, and now we need to execute the migration files. Before we can do that, let's head back up to PlanetScale and create a new branch to make these changes to. So I've got the Twitter database open inside of my organization. I'll head over to branches and then go ahead and click new branch. Let's create a new branch named add likes and hit create branch. Now that my branch is initialized, I'm going to click connect in order to create a new set of credentials for our code to connect to the specific branch. I'm going to click new password and then click on add likes. Make sure that's selected under the branch and click create password. Now I'll need to update the .env file, which contains the current set of connection details with the new username and password. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, my username and password has been entered into here and now we can go ahead and use these connection details to apply the migrations to the database. Now, now in the Rails ecosystem, there is a custom module created by PlanetScale, which helps simplify the process of applying these migrations files called PSDB migrate. This will utilize a .pscale.yaml file that has some information about your specific planet scale environment. So this way the tool can connect to it and apply the migration files. Specifically, I have the organization name defined here, the database name defined here, and then the branch in which those migration files are gonna be added, which I've pre-filled with add likes. I'm gonna use a make file, which contains a script that will parse in the .env files and then call make migrate, which calls that migration module. So I'll open up my terminal and I will type in make migrate. Hit enter. And as you can see, the tool's connecting into the plant scale environment in order to apply those migrations to the add likes branch. 
Now that the migrations have been applied, let's head back to Planet Scale and look at the changes between the two branches. Up in Planet Scale, the branch overview page for my Add Likes branch has been updated to show the differences between the Add Likes branch and the main branch, which in this case, we are adding a single column to the tweets table named Likes that has a default value of zero. This lines up with what we saw inside of the code changes from earlier. Now that the changes are applied to our new branch, we can click Create Deploy Request to create a deploy request back to the main branch. Planet Scale will automatically check to make sure these changes can be applied, as well as list the tables where changes are required. If I click on the Schema Changes tab, I can also see, we can see the delta which describes the changes that will be made to the main database branch. I'll go ahead back to Summary and click Deploy Changes, which will queue our changes for deployment. Since auto apply is checked, as soon as all of the changes are staged, they will automatically be applied to the main database branch. Now that the deployment is successful, I can actually come up to branches again, select the main branch, and then if I scroll down and find tweets and expand this, you can see the definition for the tweets table now contains that like column. So although the changes to our database have been applied, we haven't deployed the new ver newest version of the code. So let's head back to VS Code and do that now. So as stated earlier, I'm using fly.io to host the application. So I can deploy the updated version of our code using fly deploy. And now the code will be built and deployed out into the my fly application. This will take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause here and fast forward the video. Okay, it looks like the deployment was successful, so let's head back to the application and take a look at the changes. Back in the application, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page, and we can see all of the tweets now have a heart icon. If I click the heart, that tweet now has a one next to it, which indicates the number of times somebody has clicked that like button. So you've learned how to apply migrations to a database branch and merge those changes in using deploy requests without taking your production application down and doing so in the proper steps in order to get the changes to your application live up in fly.io. Now let's see what it would take to automate this entire process where you only have to open a pull request and close a pull request to pull off exactly the same work we just did. As you can see, the Twitter demo has been reset back to the state it was before we added the heart icon and the add likes feature. And we're going to take a look at how to do this automatically using GitHub Actions. I'm logged into GitHub, and if I access the Workflows folder, you'll notice there are two Actions workflows defined inside of this folder. One is create branch.yaml, which will create a branch of a database inside of PlanetScale when we open a pull request. And one is fly.yaml, which will deploy the changes to the PlanetScale database, the main branch specifically, and then deploy the updated code to fly.io so we can access the newest version of our Twitter demo automatically without having to manually access the planet scale dashboard, create branches, make changes to the databases, or deploy to fly.io manually using our terminal. So I'm gonna go to pull requests and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new pull request. So I'm gonna create a new pull request and I'm going to merge add likes into the main branch. I'll click create pull request, which will let me create this. And then if I wait a few moments after the pull request is created, you'll see that the workflows that were defined inside of those YAML files are already being attempted to run. Now, the run database migration is going to run because it's a pull request, but the fly deploy is not because this is when the pull request itself is closed. If we click on the details next to run database migrations, it will drop us into the actual job itself where we can watch this execute. Now, essentially what this is doing is connecting to the planet scale service, creating a branch of our database that has the same name of the branch we're trying to merge into main, which in this case is add likes. It's going to wait for that branch to be created, and then it's going to create a branch password just like we did earlier. It's going to then take those credentials and use them to apply the migrations to find inside of the Ruby code before taking a snapshot of the schema differences and putting them into a comment in the pull request. This means that anybody working within GitHub can actively see the changes that are getting ready to be deployed into the main database branch without actually accessing the PlanetScale dashboard. Now that this job is complete, let's go back to the pull request. And you can see it took the same changes that we traditionally see inside of the PlanetScale dashboard and applied them as a pull request here. Once we're satisfied with these changes, we can merge this pull request, which will take the code changes from add likes and apply them to main, which will also trigger the second part of the workflow to deploy our new code out into fly.io. If I go back up into the actions tab, you can see this fly deploy step is now being executed as well. I'll select add likes and we can watch this job complete as well. Now that this workflow is completed, let's head over to fly.io and take a look if our code was actually deployed.
Back in flight on IO, I will refresh the page. And there is our heart icon, just like we saw before. If I click on it, it adds a one next to the heart for this specific tweet. And all of this was done without having to manually make any changes to your database or branches within PlanetScale. To further explain how the, this level of automation is possible within PlanetScale, PlanetScale service tokens allow you to authenticate into the service with granular permissions to a specific organization and even down to specific operations that are done on the database. Inside of this workflow file, we have a service token ID and a service token defined as environment variables. If we scroll down just a bit, you can see there are several canned planet skill GitHub actions that you can import directly into your workflows. And these actions will use the environment variables, specifically the service token and service token ID, in order to authenticate against the database and perform the operations you're looking to do automatically without having to manually log into the planet scale CLI. Scrolling down a bit, you could see this step named get deploy request is actually calling the pscale CLI directly. And because we are setting the service token and service token ID as environment variables, those will be passed into the step as well, which means that when Bash attempts to run this specific line of code, it will be authenticated against the planet scale service using the service token you're able to create within planet scale. Even with the best protections in place, it's inevitable that there may be an occasion where a change has been made to your production database that you weren't expecting that brings down your entire production applications. This is where schema reverts really shine. So let's take a look at how they work and how we can uh, essentially break our Twitter application and then bring it back to life quickly without having to restore a backup. So let's say after all the hard work of adding likes, the business has all of a sudden decided we don't need likes added to Twitter and we want to go ahead and remove that data from the database. So I have a database branch here named remove likes and you can see here I've dropped the likes column and let's just assume the team working on the app has already dropped the likes logic from their code. So I'm going to go ahead and create this deploy request and I'm just going to go ahead and merge it once it's finished because we're going to assume that everything's going to work out just fine, right? I'll go ahead and deploy these changes and everything deploys successfully. Now let's head over to Twitter and check to make sure everything's running as expected. I'm just going to refresh the page to get the newest version of the code. It looks like we're getting an error here. After doing a little bit of further digging, it looks like the code has actually not been updated and it's still looking for that likes column even though it's missing from the database. So we've got two options here. Either we can quickly try and make changes to the code and push something out into production as quickly as possible, or we can just head over to PlanetScale and revert the changes that were just made and see if that brings things back online. Over in PlanetScale under the deploy request tab, you can see that deploy request number five is deployed, but I have this 28 minute timer that is counting down. If I click into the deploy request and scroll down to the bottom, we have an option here to revert the changes that were just made. I'm going to go ahead and click that and see if that fixes the issue. Okay, it looks like the changes were successfully reverted. Let's head back to Twitter and try it again. Let's just refresh and see if we can get rid of this 500 error. And everything is back up and running because we were able to quickly back out those database changes. And you can even see that this top tweet here still has a one next to it, which means the data was actually preserved as well and not just the schema. This is where schema revert really shines. It lets you back changes out that might have been mistakenly made to the production version of your database quickly and easily without having to worry about scrambling to restore from a backup or make some last minute changes to your code quickly. And this is all made possible by the fact that when a deploy request is submitted to an upstream branch in PlanetScale, a staging table is created, the data is synchronized over, and those two tables are kept in lockstep. So as writes are occurring to the new production table, they're also occurring to the old production table. When you revert a change, you are effectively switching the statuses of those two tables once again and bringing the old table back to life. At this point, you should have a better understanding how the various suite of tools that we provide at PlanetScale can be better integrated into your environment. If you like content like this and want to understand more about PlanetScale, go to planetscale.com and check out the blog and documentation portal where we're adding new content all the time. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.